Let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing now, though. We've got Ric Flair and David Flair in the ring with uh, Mean Gene. We spent a little time talking about David Flair before. Is he maybe the most prime example of too much too soon? Like, I know that we wanted him out there storyline wise, but with the benefit of hindsight, we probably did that young man an, uh, an injustice here, putting him on TV so soon, right? Oh my gosh. I almost feel like I should apologize to David. No, I, I don't feel like maybe I should. I should. It was just, a, it was a, it was, it put him in a situation where he was absolutely going to fail. First of all, he's Ric Flair's son. Talk about shoes to fill. I mean, right off the bat, he's two and a half strikes behind before he's, before he laces up a pair of boots. And then rushing him in the way we did putting the spotlight on him before he had a chance to really develop his confidence and his skill set, knowing that he's in his father's foot or in his father's shadow, which is a massive shadow. He could have spent six years in a training facility and, and worked independence for five years, and he would still have two strikes against him because he's Ric Flair's son. It's such an unfair position. We thought we were doing the right thing at the time, because we really didn't think about it hard enough. We were throwing things up against the wall, hoping something would stick. And on paper, this kind of makes sense. At least it did initially. On paper, for a short-term program or for a, a one-night you know, stunt, more or less, to, to get David involved or any other member of the family. But to put him out there, the way we did was did such a disservice, not only to, to the audience, honestly, but most importantly to David, it was just such the wrong thing to do. I feel, I, I feel bad about it right now. I just, it's horrible. So we've got mean gene chatting with uh, Rick and David flair. And here comes little Nate with a bevy of models. <laughs> They're all uh, dressed to the nines and. Of course, you see uh, Little Nate has the U.S. title there with him. Who's that girl on his arm? Do you know? Um, I thought Medasia. What was her name? Uh, her I don't name? remember her name. I was just going to say that Charles is way prettier than she is. Oh, my gosh. Will you listen to you? Is he not? I mean, go put that picture back up there. I mean. It's a Charles, handsome fellow. Yeah. She looks like she just wants to tear your head off. Mean looking. <laughs> she's what? mean looking. She is mean looking. <laughs> got that look on her face. Like she just can't wait to tear somebody's head off. And I don't know why that made me laugh, but it did. She's a mean looking. She's a mean woman. That's uh Asia. I was like, I don't think it's I, I was like, it's not China, but it sounds similar to that. And I forgot. It's a Bud Asia had black hair. She was. Yes. This is just a S Y a Asia. Hmm. All right. She had, had some her name body me, but whatever. <laughs> she was the uh, nursing aide for Ric Flair. When y'all put him in the nut house. Oh, I bet. No wonder he never got better. <laughs> 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 he was working on other stuff. <laughs> what a great line. Uh, Coach Rosie's with us live here as a part of our uh, uh, initiative for adfreeshows.com. You not only get to be a part of the uh, shows because you get to sit in on the live studio recording part, but you also get tons of bonus content, more than 100,000 hours of bonus content over at adfreeshows.com, including exclusive series you can't find anywhere else with Tully Blanchard, with Nick Patrick, with Mike Chioda, with the Blue Meanie, with David Crockett, with Kevin Sullivan, and with Lex Luger. It's all available now, more than 100,000 hours, including bonus content from each and every one of my shows, all of our StarCast panel shows through the years, just more content than you can shake a stick at. And as we're recording, last night we sat down with Sam Adonis from AAA, and he told us all about uh, the times that he's had in Lucha Libre. So we're going to start learning a little Lucha south of the border with Sam Adonis. And if you just can't get enough of the WCW discussion, as you're listening to this last night, we had an exclusive that's out of this world. Stu Snyder one-on-one -on -one with Eric Bischoff at adfreeshows.com. That's right. The same Stu Snyder that we saw on who killed WCW. This is, uh, 
we're actually recording right now before that's live and happening, but my goodness, how much are you looking forward to talking to Stu Snyder after seeing who killed WCW? A lot. Cause I got questions. So many questions. It'll be an interesting, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. I hope he shows up. We, uh, what we've just witnessed here, by the way, is that, um, they just gave the U S title to David flair. He's the new champion. Yeah. That's going to help <laughs> count out last week. Uh, buff Bagwell is out now. There's a ton of balloons that fell from the ceiling. And of course, as you might imagine, we're trying to uh, set up David flair versus buff Bagwell for the U S title. It's just, uh, challenging creatively to try to figure out exactly where David flair can fit, but at his shoulders, at his, at his father's shoulder side with the U S title over his shoulder, and he's not old enough to rent a car. I mean, you're throwing a guy to the deep end here in a major way. He'll, he, he, <laughs> with a, a concrete block tied around his neck. Yeah. We threw him into the deep end of the pool. And anybody in their right mind would have known it was going to drown him. It was just such a bad idea. To be clear though, my man's making six figures a year. He's not even old enough to drink a beer yet. I don't think. Yeah. But that part, that part of it is cool. I mean, I, yeah, he was making a lot of money, but it's temporary. And dating Stacey Keebler. Huh? And dating Stacey Keebler. Okay. I take everything back. The man owes me everything he has. That's what I'm saying. There's two. Sl- two I was sl- feeling sl- bad until you, until you reminded me of that. Stacy Keebler, six figures on television every week. I'll figure he can, it out. To this day, he can still walk around and say, yeah, George Clooney had to follow my act. <laughs> <laughs> and for what it's worth, he's doing really well. Lives on a lake in North Carolina, owns a couple businesses. He's got life figured out. Good for him. Uh, we should talk a little bit about um, uh, the Megadeth piece. Coach Rosie, who's with us live here, wants to know, I was a fan of Megadeth as a youngin. What's the story behind landing them on Nitro? I know there was a universal soldier tie-in because they worked on the soundtrack for that. That's of course a sequel to a, I don't know, kind of famous Jean-Claude Van Damme movie. And all of a sudden Goldberg finds himself with that opportunity. Allegedly first offered to the WWF and Stone Cold Steve Austin, the WWF turned it down without ever telling Austin. He was not too happy about that. So Goldberg got the nod, but what can you tell us? that you remember, if anything, about the mega death circumstance for them to actually play on Nitro? Um, well, it did start w- with the opportunity that Bill was able to get um, to be in that movie. And I believe, was it Dave Justine was the kind Dave of Dave Mustaine, guy? yeah. Yep. Dave, Dave Mustaine. Yep. Um, also a wrestling fan, which has probably had a lot to do with Bill, Bill Goldberg getting the opportunity and it having been offered to Steve Austin. Um, and because Dave Sustain was a wrestling fan, hit it off with Bill Goldberg. The opportunity was there to cross promote. It was a pretty natural thing, really. I don't remember the details. I don't remember how much. I don't think it cost us much, if anything, because it was promoting the movie. Uh, so it wasn't a financial impact that I can recall. But, yeah, it just cross promotion. It's one of, one of the things we were trying to do a lot of. 